Drive failures are the worst, so learn to utilize RAIDs in your storage systems and minimize data loss. In this video, we will be looking at creating and manipulating RAID volumes with Linux. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button, because life's a mess. RAID, or Redundant Array of Independent Disk, is a technology that allows computer users to achieve high levels of storage reliability from widely available disk drive components. RAID uses techniques of arranging the devices into various different configurations for different levels of redundancy and speed. So there's different levels of RAID. Let's start with RAID 0, or what's called Stripe Mode. Here, as you can see, you need at least two hard drives. And the whole idea is that the data as you write to the drive array goes across each one of the drives that you have. So with RAID 0, as you write, the first block of data gets written to disk 0. The second block of data gets written to disk 1. And the third block of data gets ba written back to disk 0. And the fourth block of data gets written to disk 1. Right? So it just goes back and forth, back and forth. So the reason why RAID 0 is used is because it's faster to read and write because now you have two different drives split in the load for reading and writing the data. The negative of RAID 0 is that there is no redundancy. If you lose one of the drives, you lose half the data. In my opinion, there is no redundancy at all. The next one is RAID 1, or what's called mirrored mode. And as you can see here, it takes at least two drives and the data is actually written on both drives. The advantage here is that because you have two copies of the data, even if one of the drives go bad, you still have a complete set of data. And the negative is now you basically have half the space. Right? If you have two one terabyte drives and you make a RAID 1, you basically end up only with one terabyte worth of data that's stored because of the redundancy. RAID 5 basically boasts block level striping with distributed parity. So what this means in English is that the data is striped across each of the drives. And then there's also what's called parity information that's stored on other drives. So the whole idea is that you need three or more drives to create a RAID 5 array. And if any of the drives fail, there is still enough data on the other two drives to recreate that third dead drive. And so in this case, uh, once again, the advantages is that there's redundancy in data, and then you also get good read-write performance because blocks of data are written across the different drives, not only onto one single drive. And again, the negative is that you need more hardware. Right? So if you have three drives, all of one terabyte each, you basically only have a two terabytes worth of storage. And the last one we're going to cover is RAID 10 or RAID 1 plus 0. So with RAID 10, because it is a stripe of mirrors, essentially the data is written across at least two stripes, and then each one of those stripes are mirrored. So you definitely have backup of the data. So RAID 10 needs at least four drives because you're mirroring over half of it. And so half of the data goes to the mirror, and then each quarter is one of the stripes. And so the advantage of this configuration is that it has much better throughput and latency. And the negative is that it needs even more hardware than any of the other ones we've seen. The first demo we are going to do is to create a RAID 10 array with four drives. I'm going to use thumb drives for this demo as the principle is the same as using hard drives, but it's just cheaper and faster for this purpose. So the first thing I'm going to do is to look at the physical devices available to us in our system. I'm going to use LS block. And so we see our internal drive here as SDA. Now, if we plug in the four thumb drives, I'm going to use LS block again and notice the new device letters. So here we have SDB, SDC, SDD, and SDE. So for each thumb drive, I'm going to partition each one of them to have one partition of one gigabyte each. And for each one, I'm going to do sudo fdisk slash dev sdb. And then I'm going to create a new partition, primary, starting from the beginning. And I'm going to put plus 1g for the size for 1 gig. 
and I'm going to give them the type of FD, which is a Linux RAID. And I'm going to repeat this for the other three drives. RAIDs can be built on an entire disk and don't need to be on a partition. I'm basically creating partitions on these thumb drives so I can limit the size of the RAID so that it'll be faster for this demo. So once I'm done, I'm going to do LS block again. And you can see that each one of the four devices, SDB through E, all have one partition of one gig in size. Now let's go ahead and set up the RAID array. And again, I'm going to do a RAID 10. And I'm going to use partitions SDB1, SDC1, SDD1, and SDE1. And the command I'm going to use to manipulate RAID arrays is MDADM. MD stands for multiple devices, and ADM stands for administrator. So I'm going to use sudo MDADM dash capital C to create. And then I'm going to give it a name of the array. And by standard, all the arrays are going to be under slash dev slash MD folder. And I'm going to call mine raid dash demo. Then I'm going to give it the option of dash dash level equals 10. So basically I'm doing a RAID 10 as opposed to a RAID 5 or a RAID 1 or RAID 0. Next option is dash dash RAID dash devices equals 4. So this tells the system that I'm going to put 4 drives to this array. And with RAID 10, you need a minimum of 4 drives, but you can have more than 4 drives if you, if you wish. And lastly, I'm going to tell it which devices I'm going to use to create this array. And I want to use a shortcut so I can do less typing. I'm going to do slash dev slash sd open bracket b c d e close bracket 1. And the command line is going to interpret this to basically substitute each one of the four letters in here when it expands out this command. So essentially it's going to uh, take in all four of those partitions and use them on this command line. Once we hit enter, the command returns and tell us that the array has started. So let's go ahead and take a look at the status of the RAID array. And there's two ways we can do that. The first one is we can do cat of a special file called slash proc slash md stat. So this comes back. In the first line here, we can see that it tells us that we are on a RAID 10. And then it's going to tell us that we are using these particular devices, SDB1, SDC1, SDD1, and SDE1. And know the brackets to the far left with the dash capital U, capital U, capital U, capital U. So this signifies that all four drives are being used for the array. And lastly, it tells us that it is syncing and the percentage of how much is done. And if you notice here, you can see that it gives us an estimate of how much longer it will take to uh, complete syncing the, or building the array. Another way you can check the status is using the MDADM tool with the dash dash detail option. So we can do sudo MDADM dash dash detail and then slash dev slash MD slash raid dash demo. And then the output of the command here is scrolls off the screen, but if we take a look at up top, we can see the creation time, the RAID level, the size of the device, the number of devices in the RAID, the state of the array, whether it's resyncing or whether it's actually finished doing whatever it's doing. And lastly, whether there are any failed devices or spare devices. So again, this thing is still syncing because we are letting it build the array. So let's go ahead and let it sit for a little bit. So now that it's done, let's go ahead and uh, retype the same command. We're going to do cat proc md stat. And now uh, we no longer see the percentage because it's done building. We can also check the status with the mdadm command. So sudo mdadm dash dash detail or slash dev slash md slash raid demo. And once again, it is completed. All right, now that the raid is done being built, we can go ahead and format it. Like all media devices, we need to put a file system on there before we can use it. So let's go ahead and format it with a ext4. So I'm going to do sudo mkfs.ext4 and then point it to slash dev slash md slash raid dash demo. So this step is basically treating the raid array as one giant partition so that we can format and use. So now that it's done, we can go ahead and mount that device. 
So first of all, we need a mount point. So let's do sudo make dir slash mnt slash raid. And then sudo mount slash dev slash md slash raid dash demo. And then put that to slash mnt slash raid. So now that we've mounted the raid to a mount point, we can cd into the mount point, cd mnt slash raid, and take a look inside. And because we just created it, there's nothing there. So when we do the ls, we all we see is the lost and found folder because that's the default folder for our ext4 file system. Let's take a look at how much space is available on the raid. We can use the df command. We can do df dash h of dot. As expected, we only see two gigs of usable space from our four gig raid array because we are doing raid 10. Half of it is used for mirroring. So that's why we only get two gigs usable. Now that our raid is ready for use, let's go ahead and add some files into it. I'm going to put some large files on there using the copy command. So I'm going to do sudo cp slash user slash local slash lib slash lib mobius dot star. And then I'm going to copy those to dot, right? The local folder, which is inside of the raid. And I know that those files in there are fairly big, so it'll give us something to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. While this thing is running, I'm going to unplug one of the USB devices. In a RAID 10 situation, having one drive go bad should not affect the system. So while this drive is unplugged, the copy is still going on. If we do ls-lh, we can see the three files that are uh, being copied over here. If you look at the output files, they should be around 219 megs and then 76 meg and then a really small file. And if we look at the disk usage with DF, we should see that we are using about 300 megabytes of space. So it looks like it copied over the files just fine, even though I pulled one of the drives in the middle of the copy process. And if we do cat of proc md stat, now it comes back and it tells us, if you notice here with the capital F, this particular drive has failed. So for us, SDD has failed. And it was marked as being failed. And then here with the four capital U's, one of them is missing, right? So. It with the, and it's replaced with an underscore. So basically it tells us that something has gone wrong. And let's do a sudo mdadm dash dash detail of slash dev slash md slash raid demo. And again, we can see that it tells us we have one drive that is out of service. And so what we are wondering to ourselves is that the copy program actually finish, right? Even though we unplugged the drive. Well, let's check the resulting files. And the best thing to do is we can actually hash the original files with md5 sum slash user local lib lib mobius dot star. And then we can hash the resulting files, md5 sum star. And we can see that the md5s match, which means the copy process completed properly even though we unplugged one of the drives. So our raid actually worked as expected. Since we had a bad drive, let's replace it with a new forensically prepared media. But first, let's remove the failed drive from the array. Uh, let's take a look at which one is the bad drive with cat proc md stat. And we can see that uh, sdd is the bad drive. So let's go ahead and remove it from the raid array. So we're going to do sudo mdadm slash dev slash md slash raid dash demo dash r for remove and then the component which is sdd1 once it has removed that one device let's go ahead and do a cat proc md stat again to take a look at what's there so we no longer see that bad drive but we can still see that it's uh, missing one component right it needs at least four components for the raid 10. so now let's connect a new drive and we need to verify the name of the new drive because sometimes the system will change it if you plug and unplug different drives in. So we're going to do ls block. And in this case, looks like it basically put it back to sdd again, which is fine. So let's go ahead and again, we're going to partition the drive with one partition of one gig size because it's going to make the demo go quicker. So let's do sudo fdisk slash dev slash sdd. We are going to take a look at what's there. 
with the print partition. There's nothing there, so we're going to go ahead and do n for new. Take the primary partition, starting from the beginning, and then do a plus 1g to make it 1 gig in size. Then we're going to change the type with t, and then we're going to get a type of fd for the Linux RAID. All right, now that device is ready, so let's go ahead and add it back to the RAID array. So I'm going to do sudo mdadm slash dev slash md slash raid dash demo and then dash a for add and I'm going to tell it what I'm going to add which is slash dev slash sdd1. So now you can see the light starts blinking as we just added that new drive back in because the system is incorporating and resyncing the data onto that new drive. And if we do cat of proc md stat, we see that the new drive is in the array and that it's in recovery mode where it's rebuilding the array. And here in mdstat, it kind of tells us the approximate time of how long it's going to take to rebuild. And when it's done, we see that all the lights have stopped blinking. We can check the RAID status by doing cat proc mdstat. And we can see that the rebuild is done and all the drives are used. So let's make sure that our data is still intact by doing an MD5 of the files. So once again, I'm going to do a MD5 of the source files. So MD5 of slash user slash local slash lib slash libmobius.star. And then I'm going to do an MD5 of the files that are here. So MD5 of libmobius.star. And you can see that the MD5s all still match. So basically, the array is intact. If you need to detach the RAID array, you should cleanly bring the array down. We are first going to unmount the RAID. So we're going to CD to get out of there. Semicolon sudo umount slash mnt slash RAID. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to deactivate or stop the RAID. And we're going to do sudo mdadm dash dash stop slash dev slash md slash RAID dash demo. And we get feedback that the RAID has stopped. And we can do more verification by doing cat slash proc slash md stat. And sure enough, it confirms that the RAID is no longer there. And lastly, we can also do sudo mdadm dash dash detail of slash dev slash md slash raid dash demo and we get feedback that there is nothing there so we've successfully unmounted the raid and stopped the raid for more videos on the linux command line make sure you watch these videos here or if you're interested in learning about linux tips and tricks watch these videos here Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.